The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks. Everybody, uh, uh, welcome to the show. If you have any questions, it's 877 927 uh, six six four eight, and I started the show for uh, today for the first chart I put in for Tiger TV was the chart from JP Morgan. Uh, it shows basically the influence of the VIX index going back about 80 years, and as you can see that uh, it does you know have some incredible volatility. But folks, we we have a, a tremendous outlier event happening in that VIX index. When you have something that drops 39 percent in one week like we did uh, this past week, and I, I will put that chart into Tiger TV a little bit later, uh, that is really a very, very significant uh, event that occurred. Now, uh, the first question that someone brought to my attention today is the uh, Russell, the IWM, uh, which is the Russell Index, and uh, they asked if it was a three-drive pattern forming, and the answer to that is no, and the reason for that is is we don't have any uh, really strong symmetry in time between the uh, time between March and August and uh, January. There should be more symmetry in time. So it does have the potential for being a double top. The important thing about this IWM, and, and if you don't, you have to do the work yourself. You know, defy human nature, do the work yourself. But take a look at the Russell Index chart, IWM, and go back and look to see how many gaps have not been filled. And the answer to that is a zero. I mean, they all get filled. So, you know, what that's happening now, I know everybody's excited and the whole world's bullish. And, uh, you know, there's potential here for a double top. But uh, they're going to fill the gap. I mean, it's going to come down at least to 8458. That's, that's a minimum. And, you know, there's another gap down at the 8182 level. So, you know, this is not the time to be bullish. The whole world is bullish now. I mean, you can't find anybody anywhere that thinks the stocks are not going at least 1,600 or 1,700 in the S&P 500 for 2012. And they could certainly could be right, but I don't think they're going to do it on this leg. I think we're going to have at least one or two places where they're going to scare some people. This VIX index that we're looking at is so um, uh, oversold that it's just absolutely amazing. I mean, you stop and think, something down 39% for the week. I mean, that's... that's uh, in the crash of 1987, on October the 19th, the Dow was down 33%, um, I believe, from the high. On that, that was from the high on August the 27th. This is down 39% in three days. So that just shows you what, a, what an outlier event is, and that's really telling you that there's absolutely no fear in the market at all, which is usually a good thing. I mean, you know, from both sides, from both perspectives, either long or short. But it's telling us that we're going to have some really good, uh, you know, volatility coming forward in 2013. That's what the VIX is is, is telling me. But uh, boy, they're they're really writing. It's the the obituary for the VIX index. Uh, just about all the financial uh, channels that I've been uh, exposed to, uh, that they have, uh, you know, basically said it's a worthless index. And believe me, folks. Every time they say that, the VIX comes back one more time, you know, to prove to them, you know, that they're uh, that they're wrong. Now, um, we we still have the situation where the um, the index itself for the uh, Nasdaq has. Uh, before I do that, I would like to do the uh, the New York Stock Exchange index because it has a uh, a really nice uh, uh, pattern forming. It's making uh, two one point two seven expansions, very close to where we are. Uh, right now, this is on the, the longer-term chart going back uh, a year and a half, and it shows that we have uh, two ratios of the 1.27 expansion variety uh, coming in just a, a hair's breadth from where we are right now. And so that's uh, an important spot that we really need to be, uh, you know, focused on. And believe me, we've had these breakout-type things before. Uh, what was amazing about this one is that when it started on January 2nd, it caught a whole lot of people by surprise you know, when you can get these markets to move, uh, you know, that quickly, that fast. We had a little bit of follow-through uh, on the 3rd of January, and then since that time we've been doing, you know, very little the last couple of days, and it's just basically digesting, you know, all of these gains. So 
Whether we go straight up from here or not, I don't know. But, again, these gaps will be filled uh, when I don't know, but uh, they have a high probability uh, of being filled. Now, um, on, the, on the bearish side of this, and that is uh, we want to take a look at the market that has led us the whole way, and that is the uh, NASDAQ market. And it only went to the 61% retracement of the September highs, whereas the New York Stock Exchange Index has, has reached the uh, old highs. The S&P 500 Index has came very close to the old highs. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has made a 786 retracement of those highs. And utilities has made about a 50% retracement of those highs. So there's a lot of non-confirmation everywhere. And one of the first questions that I get whenever I start a show is, do I still think that uh, Apple is going to 394 a share? And the answer to that is yes. It's not shown me anything to tell me that it doesn't want to go to 394 a share. All Apple has to do to accelerate now, and this will be from a technical perspective because there'll be a lot of people that'll you know, leave the the, uh, the ship as it goes below $500 a share. But if it goes below $500 a share, taking out those lows we made just several months ago, uh, that's going to set up that ABCD pattern in Apple that occurs down at the 394 level. And stop and think, folks, we had a, a massive rally in uh, the market. I mean, well over 10 15% in just a couple of days. Apple is still trading below those levels. I mean, it had a nice rally up to, you know, 555 for a, a short time, but, you know, it's given most of that back, and it's just acting weaker than the rest of the market. And this is the number one stock in the world, folks. I mean, everybody knows how great Apple is, and, uh, you know, it still will be a great company. It's just the fact that it's just lagging the market. Somebody knows something in that market that, uh, that they're not telling us. At least that's what my assumption is. Now, the next chart that I need to uh, really bring to your attention, we, we talked about it briefly, and that is this uh, VIX index uh, of volatility, uh, the daily chart that we have in there. We have a whole lot of cycles that are coming due in just a, a few days. You realize we have a, a new moon coming in on uh, January the 11th, and then we have this cycle date that happens around the 13th. <clears throat> and so we have a lot of things that tell us that we're, we're getting close you know, to some type of a bounce-back rally in the VIX. And if you don't think it can bounce back, folks, just go back. You're looking at about almost two years here uh, on this chart that's in Tiger TV, and you'll can see that every time we get down to this, uh, you know, $13 level, you know, the market seems to, uh, you know, give up a ghost, and it just, uh, you know, starts to sell off, and the VIX will start to rally. The problem is, is this monster gap that we left uh, after we had the Gartley sell signal uh, on uh, December uh, the 28th when we had the full moon, the uh, market has uh, gapped down, you know, really dramatically, 39% uh, in one week. And that, that's just uh, that's such an outlier event that it, it should really, you know, uh, make you uh, very, very alert to what's going on. Uh, and I think part of the, the, the factor that we have here is at the end of the year uh, that there's a thing called the January effect. And the January effect is that, during the first 10 days, the first 10 trading days of January, there's a high bias that the price of the small cap stocks will increase more than the price of the large cap stocks. And that certainly is what's happened with the, uh, the IWM this year. But even then, the Dow Jones has moved up quite a bit. The laggard this year has been the NASDAQ. You know, the NASDAQ can barely make a 61% retracement of this move. And uh, the others have, uh, you know, taken out highs and, uh, you know, look like it could go, uh, you know, extremely, uh, extremely bullish, uh, you know, if, if in fact they, they continue higher. There's a great deal of resistance in that New York Stock Exchange Index uh, right where it is, uh, you know, right, right near the close on Friday. So I don't think we're going to get much above that without backing off, you know, somewhat. Uh, most of the, you know, the enthusiasm of the market that was done on that uh, the second and third uh, and fourth, second, third, and fourth of, of January, and, and now we're coming in, and it's just sort of spinning its wheels the last couple of days. But the second was the the really big day, and you know after that, you know, it's not been too much uh, too much happening. So this is why we want to watch this VIX index because it has the strong uh, propensity that when everybody thinks that it's dead that it comes back from the dead, and that's a, in a, an important factor. Now, I wanted to, uh, I'm going to talk about the utilities and the transports because I think they're both 
uh, very important. Uh, the Dow Jones at Utilities uh, has made a 38% uh, retracement from the August highs, and it's made a 51% a retracement from the uh, October highs, so it's still in a downtrend and uh, looks, uh, you know, decidedly bearish, uh, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, it still could go a little bit higher, but, uh, you know, not during, uh, not during this leg. Now, the next one that I want to, to bring into Tiger TV, uh, something that we follow all the time, and that is the uh, Dow Jones Transportation Index. Uh, the Dow Jones Transportation Index completed that A, B, C, D pattern uh, right uh, near the, uh, the, the, the new moon, and then it rallied up very, very strongly. But the important thing is, is it left two monster gaps on the Dow Jones Transportation. Folks, study that chart and go back uh, during the period for the last uh, two years and try to find a gap that hasn't been filled, and you won't find one. And if you go back even farther, you won't find one. And here we're looking at not only just one gap, we're looking at two gaps. And, uh, you know, this is something that's going to be filled. Why gaps are filled, I'm not sure. All I know is that most gaps will be filled. Uh, there is a gap, I've mentioned this several times, there is a gap on the Dow Jones Industrial Average that has not been filled, and that was the gap at the Desert Storm War in January of 1991. Uh, you know, it was the six-hour uh, six war. Uh, and Norman Schwarzkopf, by the way, uh, passed away this past week of pneumonia, and he was 78 years old and very little, uh, very little uh, in the news about him or anything, which I think was, was very... Uh, you know, it was very sad because I think he was one of our greatest generals. In fact, when they interviewed him, you know, several years later, they asked him, uh, you know, about his greatest accomplishment. And he said, I will not be remembered, you know, for winning the Desert Storm War. He said, I'll be remembered by the general that uh, was 30 miles from downtown Baghdad with the only obstacle were women and children. And he said, my boss told me to stop. And the boss was, of course, George Bush Sr., and that was it. And uh, that's what he said he would be remembered by, but who knows. Anyway, it was sad that he died so young. Um, but anyway, the gap on the Dow Jones transportation, both of those gaps will be filled, and you're looking at at least a 150-point know, move down in the transportations to fill those gaps. So that's, uh, that's what you're looking at, uh, you know, as far as the gaps in, in what we're seeing. So, uh, you know, keep in mind that... Uh, you know, they will be filled. The question is when. I, I don't know the answer to that, and no one else does either. And all we're trying to do is to look at some of these, uh, you know, charts to give us some ideas. I, I enjoyed listening to uh, Basil because he has uh, a lot of the, uh, the uh, same types of charts that I look at. And uh, he had a lot of gaps on that, and it really, it was quite amazing. Okay, take a little break here, 877-927-6648. <laughs> Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have a call from uh, Denver, Colorado. Are you there, Chris? Hey. Hello. Hey, Larry. Top of the year uh, to you. Love you. Thank you. What can I do for you, my friend? Okay, so we got a new year. I'm looking at the uh, the 2013 Bradley model. You know, yeah. it's good to see some of your thoughts about uh, some of the near-term cycles with the VIX and stuff. I sure you know, will. When I, was, when I was looking at the 2012 uh, model, uh, the second half of the year, you know, I counted at least three inversions. Um, it was real difficult to work with, uh, for me anyway. Uh, me too. So I want <laughs> <laughs> to get your take uh, looking forward into 2013, because it looks like starting at the end of January, it's a, it's a strong trend up through the middle of the year. That's correct. If it's following the regular Bradley, uh, it, that is most probably what will happen. I think we have two things uh, that we can watch very closely. First of all, we have a really strong Bradley date uh, coming in around the 18th to the 21st of January. And right. then we then we have the next little move into February the fourth, which is uh, if the Bradley's inverted, uh, you know we we would be making a peak at that time. And if it's doing the regular model, the, the Bradley will be coming down into that point. So February fourth, uh, a month from uh, just less than a month, is where we're what we'll be watching to see if the Bradley is going to be uh, you know spot on. If you remember uh, to give me a call back on that date. You know, we can certainly, uh, you know, discuss it because I, I think that's going to be the key date, you know, to look at. And that happens to be uh, a Monday. So Monday, February 4th, if you remember to call in, uh, Chris will have a, a better idea of where we stand. All, all I know now is that, you know, we, we went up to the 786 in the Dow Jones at that 13,400 level. We backed off, you know, just barely from that. And the NASDAQ could barely make a 61% retracement. And everybody is, is uh, you know, just absolutely, you know, ecstatically bullish now. 
And uh, I just can't be bullish here, especially when I look at the NASDAQ. Uh, it just doesn't look good. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah, if you'll remember, Chris, give me a call on uh, February 4th. Write that on your calendar because I've certainly got it on my calendar, but that's the, the key place, to, uh, you know, to look at the, uh, the Bradley. Now, it had been following the inverted model uh, very closely since the solar eclipse and new moon of November the 14th. Then we went up into the, the full moon uh, last week that, that we hit, and now we're coming into the new moon. Uh, coming in on the 11th, but the real key day is February 4th, hands down. There's no other date in uh, 2013 that is more important than the uh, February 4th. Okay, I got it on okay. my calendar. Okay, thanks a lot for calling in, Chris. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, the uh, Someone asked the question is whether the, um, the Dow Jones Industrial Average would be making a head and shoulders pattern from the May high to the high we made in October to the high we made this week. Uh, there's a, it certainly could be a head and shoulders, but the problem is, is, you know, I like to see, you know, really nice symmetry between the shoulder and the head, and we have price symmetry, but we do not have time symmetry. Then, and that's only part of the, of the equation, the way that I look at it. But it certainly could be a head and shoulders pattern on the Dow Jones uh, industrial average without any, uh, without any problem because, uh, you know, the ratios are there. We're almost at the exact same price as the left shoulder. The left shoulder came in at 13344 and right now we're trading at 13347 So, you know, it's pretty much spot on for, for price. I would just like to see a, you know, better symmetry in time, but, you know, we don't always get what we want. So, you know, we'll see if it's correct. All I'm saying is we have an outlier event in the VIX. We have an outlier event in the uh, small caps. We have an outlier event in the Dow Jones transportation. You got to be careful, folks. Don't get too bullish up in here. Gaps get filled, and you know they don't want you don't want to be pulled into this thing and uh, you know turn around like people that bought Apple at you know six eighty seven on the first uh, twenty dollar pullback and have you know stayed with the, uh, the the stock for that long. You know may, maybe it goes to a thousand, but most probably it's not going to. Uh, you know, to do it, uh, you know, during this uh, during this time frame. That that's uh, that's my assumption. So there's just a lot of things that are happening uh, that make you uh, a, a little bit skeptical in here, and that's the main thing that uh, that you want to be watching. Um, we're going to uh, after we get back from the uh, break. I want to talk uh, uh, a little bit, uh, not more than a little bit. But I want to focus on the uh, metals, mainly gold and silver, and then we have to talk about treasury bonds because, um, you know, we missed that uh, head and shoulders pattern by, by uh, three days. We thought it was going to come in on the 4th, and it came in on the 2nd. And now we've completed a major pattern in treasury bonds, and then we're going to cover that when we get back along with the gold and silver. 877-927-6648. heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter Market Insights gives traders, investors and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely Completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N A D E X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and uh, we're going to start out with the uh, gold market. I posted in the Tiger TV that long-term uh, chart that we've been watching in gold, and the price at 16.29 uh, per ounce. We hit 16.2790 uh, last Friday. And uh, what we're doing now is we are uh, getting ready to retest a 61% retracement in the gold down here at the, uh, at the 1640 level. So we really, if gold is going to be bullish, it absolutely positively has to stay above that 1627 low that we made last week. If we break below that and close below that, that's going to be a, a tremendous uh, bearish influence on gold. Uh, but right now, everything is set up for it uh, to hold uh, that level, and that's the, that's the main thing that uh, we're looking at it. And, uh, you know, if it can do that, you know, we'll see. But right now, uh, it looks like we're making a 61% retracement in gold down at the 1640 level. And if you, you know, take a look at it from the long side there, you want to be able to, uh, you know, place a stop so that you don't have to risk very much. And in this particular case, and we'd be looking at a stop of, of around eight dollars uh, in in a market that's you know worth a hundred and you know eighty thousand. You know that's really not very not very much. You know that we have uh, that we have at that point. Now I wanted to uh, you give me one second here. I've got a slight problem with data, and uh, that makes it a little different. Oh dear, hold on a second. It's going to take me a second to get it up, and then I'll be okay. Yeah, I think here we go. There we go. Just give me a second here, and I will be okay. We have a um, a very large uh, ABCD that is completed uh, in the uh, Treasury bond market. Um, 
It has uh, stopped right where it should have uh, as of uh, Friday, and uh, we're, we're in the midst of a rally. Now, remember, uh, I want it. I want it, yeah. What I want, what the market gives us is two different things. But I was looking for the head and shoulders pattern to complete around January the 4th, uh, and, it, of course, it completed on January the 2nd uh, up at the uh, 148 level, and I was assuming we would get a little bit higher into 149, but, but we didn't get that. Now we've completed the ABCD to the downside. Uh, we talked about the importance of the 143 level in Treasury bonds. Folks, if we close below 143 in Treasury bonds, uh, these interest rates are not going to wait for anybody. They're going to start moving uh, higher. And it's going to surprise some people because virtually no one thinks you know, that we're going to have uh, higher interest rates in 2013. The Fed has basically said they're going to you know, keep interest rates low, you know, through 2014 and maybe maybe longer. But the Fed, you know, they set interest rates, but they don't control interest rates. The interest rates are controlled by the marketplace. So if the marketplace tells them that they want, they want higher rates, they're going to get it. And believe me, the politics that, that are played in this game, you know, is tremendous. Uh, I, you know, most of you realize that most of our debt goes to China and to uh, Japan, Two point six trillion dollars of all of our debt is through uh, China and Japan. I believe uh, China has 1.4 uh, trillion and uh, China has 1.1 trillion of U.S. Treasury debt. So there's a whole lot of things going in it. And if, if Japan and China start fighting about these islands, uh, you know, then it's going to bring a political thing in and that could be something that, you know, makes uh, the Treasury bonds, you know, become a little bit... Uh, a little bit weaker, but we'll have to wait and see. What I'm looking for now is if we can get a, a nice rally off of this ABCD move in Treasury bonds uh, up to about this 146. I'll just put this into Tiger TV so that you can so you can see how I draw the retracement in, and would we'll be looking at the uh, market to come in around the uh, the 146 level. In other words, about a two point rally uh, in Treasury bonds. Uh, then I would be willing to uh, you know get ready to take the short side because we've started down because we've had lower bottoms now. We've, uh, we've gone below the October lows. We've gone below the December lows. And so this market has had lower tops since, uh, you know, November. And so we're looking at a market that is, uh, you know, showing us that interest rates really want to go higher. You know, that's the, that's the, that's the bottom line that, uh, that we're looking at when we're, when we're watching these things. Now, someone asked me to uh, take a look at the, uh, the silver market, much like we did, you know, with the uh, with the gold market, and uh, you know, silver stopped exactly uh, at the 618 retracement on the daily chart, just like uh, we w we had hoped that it would. Uh, it stopped exactly at the 29 dollar and 20 cent level. Uh, came within three cents. I went three cents below the exact 61 percent retracement, and 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 it took out the lows of the past 10 days, which was really good, and then it didn't go anywhere. So that's a very positive thing that happened. And now what we have happening now in silver is the same thing that we have happening in gold. And I'm going to put that into the uh, Tiger TV so you can take a look at it because this is a, this is a major retest that we've got going on uh, potentially in gold and silver today. Uh, and that's uh, at the uh, 29, about 30 cents away. In silver, so we want to be watching silver at 29.70. I don't recommend trading silver because it's a lot less liquid than the gold. But the gold at 16.40 looks uh, looks pretty good. Okay, we got a caller from uh, oh, this today must be Denver Day. Uh, Warren in Denver, are you there, Warren? Yeah, yes, Larry. How are you doing today, sir? I'm very good, sir. What can I do for you? I need to look at the soybean contract since today is uh, Oh, last boy, day. I'm watching it all the time because we're, we're at some really critical levels here. If you'll give yes. me one second, uh, we have a, we've been watching that position because, you know, it hit the exact 61% uh, retracement. And what I'm going to do, I think the best way to, to show this is I'll put, uh, I'll put into Tiger TV first the 61% um, retracement that we made this morning down at the 1366 uh, level. Remember, that was the level we were looking at on the long-term daily? I, I really wasn't listening. I was just looking as in my own work, sir. Okay, good. Well, I'm, I'm, all I can tell you is on a long-term basis, looking at the daily chart in soybeans, uh, we, made a, we made a perfect pattern. We hit that 61% retracement, 
spot on. I'm going to put that into Tiger TV. Uh, you know, this is a, a beautiful place to get long beans, in my opinion. Uh, you don't have to risk much here. Your risk is probably about 15 cents. But, uh, you know, we, we took out last month's low by 4 or 5 cents and didn't go anywhere, which is a uh, another positive thing. And today we're retesting that that level again. So I, I, I like beans. That's all I can say. You don't have to risk much from here. Because it seems like uh, all the contracts are settled up from your end, and tomorrow will kind of start a new, uh, like, you know, just kind of a whole new push. Well, part of that, yeah, I, I agree with you there, because part of that, you know, we have so many hedge funds that trade these things, and they do their strategies over the Christmas holidays, and then when the first week comes in, you know, they start to implement the, the implement these, and you see it in the increased uh, volume and increased open interest. We haven't seen it yet uh, in the grains, but the numbers that we're seeing, you know, we, we the corn number uh, was pretty much spot on. The wheat number was, you know, spot on. Uh, the soybean market is spot on. Gold is spot on. Silver is spot on. If these things hold, this is a major, you know, major buying opportunity for some of these commodities. Uh, the way that I see it, from a technical standpoint. Yes, that that that. So, which contract uh, were you like specifically looking at? I was looking. Well, at, I go to the nearby. I look at. I March. was looking at ZSH three. Yes, that's it. That's March soybeans. That's the one you want to be looking at. And then when March is finished. You uh, March would go to uh, you'd go to the July soybeans. That would be uh, you know the old crop soybeans, and then after that you go to November. So those are the main ones that you uh, that you trade. Well, just to make sure I was you know on the same contract as you, it was it, this March contract seemed to. Yes, yeah, it's the March at right now. March March beans is trading at thirteen seventy three for bushel, and the, the Fibonacci number was thirteen um, uh, sixty. And the low uh, that it made was uh, thirteen fifty nine and a quarter. So I mean that's spot on. I mean that that that's a perfect sixty one percent retracement. As close as it gets. Thank you very much for helping. You bet. Me out and on uh, if you see my daughter today, tell her I said hello because she lives in Denver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Denver's thanks a lot, a big Warren. Place now, Larry. Yeah, and I'll be rooting for the uh, the the uh, Denver Broncos this coming weekend because I'm a big fan of uh, of Peyton Manning. I remember when his daddy used to play Archie Manning, and God, he was a uh, he was exciting as his son to watch play. So, oh yeah, I mean it's, it, he's a big deal, you know, since he came yeah. to Denver. There's no question about it. Yeah. Well, happy Thank New Year you. to you, Warren. Okay. Okay. Uh, we were just mentioning the uh, the fact on the soybeans, corn. Uh, wheat, all of these are at major points, and and I, I know I have, this is not the commodity show, but I do want to bring the ETF up for the um, for the commodities. That's the DBA that we talked about uh, on the show last uh, last Thursday because we uh, we were talking about this uh, big 61 percent retracement level that uh, that we've been watching for uh, quite some time, and I'm going to put it into the uh, Tiger TV. You'll see that we hit that today. And, uh, you know, we're right at, uh, this This has been an incredible market for uh, technical analysis, and that's the DBA, and which is the ETF for commodities. And we're right at the uh, 61% retracement for the DBA today at the 2772. Uh, you don't have to risk more than 50 cents on this one. I mean, you could easily gap because, you know, ETFs have a lot of gaps in them. But these commodities are, uh, all of them, every one of them is, uh, at major points, and you don't see them all coming together at the same time very often because they're all, you know, they're not related. Soybeans is not related to silver, and gold is not related to wheat. So these things are, you know, certainly, you know, running on their own ski, uh, their own steam. But you have to be able to, uh, you know, find a place to buy them, and that's what the technical analysis tries to help you do. And uh, we're right over major stuff in all the commodities. We've been waiting for this for quite some time. Uh, on these things, and they're here right now, so we'll see if they're going to hold. But it's just a probability. Remember, it's never a certainty when we're doing this. It's always just a, you know, just a probability of uh, of doing these things when we're when we're able to uh, do them. Someone asked the question uh, about the bond market because uh, you know we we've have a little bit of a rally coming off that ABCD. This is only the second day of the rally. So you can't really assume very much, you know, with that. There's just not much you can do uh, to make an assumption of it. There, it's just uh, it's just too early. It's too early to tell. So there's not much uh, you can say about it. Um, I will. Uh, I want to discuss uh, a little bit about the uh, U.S. dollar index because we have been at this uh, 
uh, 80 level, uh, you know, several times. Uh, we had a, a big rally here uh, over the past 10 days, and uh, the market stopped uh, exactly uh, at the uh, 786 retracement of the last high that we made. Uh, that came in at the 80 level, 8080. And if we can get above 8080 in the U.S. dollar index, that's going to tell us that we're getting ready to break out uh, to the upside. But right now we're at uh, we're we're still in a downtrend because we've had lower highs in the U.S. dollar index, and uh, the lows have been higher. So we're in a really tight triangle between uh, you know 78 and uh, 81. It will it will come out of here one of these days. But right now. It's, uh, you know, it's overbought. We're just having the second day down after a 10-day run-up. And so, you know, we'll watch to see if the 79.60 level holds on this U.S. dollar index on the next pullback. Um, the other one that we uh, are very, very interested in, that is the, uh, the Japanese yen uh, versus the U.S. dollar. We have been, uh, you know, very bullish on that up until it got to the 86 level. And uh, since that time, uh, you know, we, we are saying that we should get a very uh, substantial uh, correction from uh, very close to where we are uh, right now because uh, we, we just missed the 1.618 expansion uh, of last year's highs by uh, 20 cents in this. So uh, the 88.60 level is very, very important uh, in the U.S. dollar versus the uh, Japanese yen. I believe this is the big sleeper for the cross rates. I've, I've been saying this for a long time. All we want to wait for now is to see the first substantial AB equals CD uh, correction in this market. Realize, you know, we have been up for a solid month. We started on December the 4th. This is uh, December or January the 7th. We've been straight up for an absolute month. So that's telling us that this market is what? Overbought. So you don't want to buy something that, you know, it's going straight up like this, but you want to wait for the for the first correction. We've been trying to sell it short at the 88.60 level for the past 12 hours. We, we didn't get any higher than 88.40, so it didn't quite uh, hit our level, but that's what, uh, that's what we're looking at as far as seeing if the Japanese yen is going to, uh, you know, to make it to that upside. Um, uh, that's what I see for the currencies. Uh, the Australian dollar uh, has been lagging the market. Usually when the market has a huge rally like we've had, uh, in the stock market, the Australian dollar goes up uh, along with it, and uh, this has not been the case this time. Uh, this is a, this what they call this is the risk on trade because if stocks go up, you know, they're going to pull commodities and other things up with them. And this fact, we have had lower highs all along in the uh, Canadian dollar ever since last February. All the highs, you know, have been lower. Uh, we've had higher lows too, so the market's in this huge triangle. But uh, this last move should have pushed the Australian dollar, you know, well above the 107 level, and we're still at the 10480 level. So that's a sign that, you know, another sign that's out there that's saying this stock move has got some, uh, you know, suspects uh, written all over the top of it. So mainly it's these gaps. I mean, come, come on, guys, you, you know, give me a break. Go back and do some of this work yourself and see these gaps, and see that they're filled, and you'll save yourself a lot of money. I'm going to take a break, 877-927-6648. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, folks, so we're going to end this show here with one of our favorite stocks, which is Apple. And uh, I'm going to give you some, uh, what I think are some, you know, cogent points on, on where we think it is. Um, you know, Apple has, uh, from the high we made in September, uh, it dropped uh, $200 a share in uh, six weeks into November, and now we rallied up to the 382, which was up around 595. That was the C leg, and the D leg measures down to uh, you know 397. So it's $130 away, and that comes in the end of the month, right around the um, around the 28th of the month. And believe me, folks, it would be the equal time down from uh, December into late January if it does the same thing. The key is we need to get below the $500 uh, per share level in the Apple in order to trigger this last uh, uh, big leg down. And believe me, it's, it's acting so much weaker than the rest of the stock market. You have to ask yourself if you're in this stock, you know, if stocks can rally as much as they have in the IWM and all the other things, and why? what's wrong with Apple? they got great products. I mean, everybody knows that. You, you see them every time you turn around. So just be careful. Uh, that's all I can tell you. The main thing about this show today, and I'm going to be you know beating on this drum uh, until I, uh, I see the uh, whites of their eyes, and that is these gaps. These are outlier events that we're having, folks. They're, they're not good for trading, but they're great for volatility. We're going to see some incredible volatility, but you've got to be careful in here and not to chase, you know, some of these markets. And that's the, the main thing that I uh, try to stress is that if you be patient and wait for the patterns to come to you, you know, you're, going to, you're going to see some pretty good. We waited on gold for a long time for it to get down to this, uh, 
you know, 16, 30 per ounce level. It's done what it's supposed to do. Uh, soybeans have done what they're supposed to do, and the others are doing pretty much the same thing. So we'll see, you know, if they're going to hold out. And if these fail, you just got to stand aside and, you know, wait to see what the next thing is going to bring because when you have outlier events like what happened in the NASDAQ and what happened, not NASDAQ, what happened in the New York Stock Exchange Index, the Dow Jones transportation with those two big gaps, and the net, and the VIX index dropping 39 percent in one week, you got something that's that the, the red lights are flashing. You know that's the uh, that's the main thing. In Chinese, I think the word for siren is bibo bibo, but you got to be watching for that. That's what's going on now. Sirens sirens are ringing everywhere, and so this is not the time to be complacent and just buy stocks in the, indiscriminately. And well, you should never do that, but. You know, you got to be able to, uh, you know, pick your spots best. And this is not the best time, you know, to pick the spots. You know, we got a we got a new moon coming up on the end of the month here. Excuse me, on Friday, end of the week, and so that'll be some some pretty good uh, volatility also. So uh, I think we'll probably have a little bit of a back off into the end of the week, and then we'll we'll see what the next rally will uh, will do from from that level. So just remember that the fact that these gaps are, they're not your friend. That means that there's big unknowns out there. And if you look at the charts, you'll see that these gaps are filled. It's almost impossible to find a gap that's not filled. Now, it might take it a month or two to do it, but it's better to do that than to, than to chase the market. Now, even with Apple, all those gaps were filled. So that's the main thing that, that we're watching when we're, we're looking at. A question that someone uh, posed uh, is what happens if gold go, breaks below, you know, the 16, uh, you know, 28 per ounce level. Uh, that sets up, uh, you know, targets, you know, way down into the, the mid-14, um, not mid-14, mid-15, um, 15.50 level per ounce if it breaks, another $100 per ounce if it can do that. And if, if these start to fail, this would be what happened in 2007. One other point I wanted to make, if you're really bullish here, is to go back and look what happened in October of 2007 when the economy was booming and everything was great and we made a new high into October. We just, just took it out, uh, the old high in, from August, by just a little bit, and then look what happened. Bada bing, bada boom, it was down for you know 60%. So be careful. That's all I can tell you. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.